<laughs> According to Forbes magazine, she was once Africa's richest woman with a net worth of 3.5 billion dollars in a perfect illustration of how to rob a country. The daughter of Angola's longtime former president became extremely wealthy. Her empire is now a skeleton of what it once was and she was dropped from the magazine's list in January 2021 after her assets in Angola, Portugal and Netherlands were frozen due to corruption allegations brought against her by her government. She now owes $340 million in debt to the Portuguese company PT Ventures. To understand Isabel dos Santos's rise and downfall, I have to tell you about her father, Jose Eduardo dos Santos, who ruled Angola for nearly 40 years from 1979 to 2017. Following the death of President Agustinio Neto in 1979, dos Santos took power. In an attempt to improve relations with the West, particularly with the United States, which had refused to recognize his government, he abandoned Marxist and Leninism. The changes did not appease the opposition group, the National Union for Total Independence of Angola, UNITA, which increased its attacks. Dos Santos signed a peace agreement with UNITA and agreed to multi-party elections in 1991. However, after he defeated Savimbi in the polls in 1992, UNITA resumed fighting, which lasted until Savimbi's death in 2002. Dos Santos remained president into the 2000s because the elections scheduled for 1997 had been postponed indefinitely due to the conflict. Dos Santos announced in 2017 that parliamentary elections would be held in September 2008, followed by presidential elections in 2009. His party, MPLA, won the 2008 parliamentary elections. The presidential election scheduled for 2009 was postponed. The following year, a new constitution scrapped direct presidential election, instead requiring the president to be appointed by the leader of the party with the largest share of the vote in parliamentary election. This meant that Dos Santos would be president until the next round of parliamentary elections, which were scheduled for 2012, when his party comfortably earned an overwhelming majority in parliament in the August 31st, 2012 elections. Dos Santos was re-elected for another five years as president. Dos Santos and his administration were criticized for being increasingly autocratic as well as for Angola's notorious corruption. Dos Santos is accused of enriching himself, his family and close cronies at the expense of the rest of the country's residents, many of whom were still living in extreme poverty. If you're new here, please subscribe on our channel and click on that bell icon so that you can always get a notification every time we upload new content. The Rise of Isabel Dos Santos The BBC reported on linked documents revealing how she allegedly made her fortune by exploiting her own country and corruption. When her father was president, she had access to lucrative deals involving in land, oil, diamond, and telecommunications. The documents revealed how she and her husband were permitted to purchase valuable state assets in a series of suspicious deals. In the early 90s, Isabel Dos Santos began working as a project manager engineer for Urbana 2000, a subsidiary of Jembas Group that had won a contract to clean and disinfect the city. She then established a tracking company. The widespread adoption of walkie-talkie technology paved the way for a subsequent venture into telecommunications. Isabel Dos Santos began a series of business acquisitions in the early 2000s. She built an empire in Angola and Portugal that includes banking, diamonds, oil, telecoms, real estate, engineering, and supermarkets. Some of Isabel Dos Santos's major holdings include Trans-Africa Investment Services, founded together with her mother for the diamond business, Unitel International Holdings, based in Amsterdam, a company vehicle for Isabel Dos Santos's investment in telecommunications, Santora Finance, a company vehicle for her investments in Banco BPI based in Lisbon, Esparza Holding based in Amsterdam that deals in energy and oil, Condis, a retail business based in Rwanda, Angola. Her father appointed her as chair of Sonango, Angola's state oil company in June 2016. Being the head of the state oil company in Angola is only second to the president's the most powerful position 
in the country. On January 19, 2020, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists released a detailed report on how Dos Santos accumulated her riches over the years. According to the report, she earned a fortune at the expense of Angolan people. Based on the evidence provided by Corruption Watchdog, the platform to protect whistleblowers in Africa, the report was called Randa Leaks. The fall of Isabel Dos Santos. On August 23, 2017, Joao Relenko was elected president of Angola and he sacked Isabel Dos Santos from Sonango, Angola's state-owned oil company. In the following months, the new president, Joao Rolanko, decided to address corruption, which is a legacy of his predecessor, Jose Eduardo Dos Santos, who led the oil-rich South African country for 38 years. On December 30th, 2019, a court in Angola ordered the freezing of Isabel Dos Santos's personal bank accounts and those of her business partners. According to the Attorney General's office, they struck deals with the Angolan state, causing the country to lose $1.4 billion. On January 23, 2020, the Angolan Attorney General met with his Portuguese counterpart to request assistance with the prosecution of Isabel dos Santos. Portugal became the second country to impose a freeze on Isabel dos Santos's personal and corporate accounts. Following asset freezes, Forbes removed Isabel dos Santos from the billion ranks in January 2021. In December 2021, Isabel Dos Santos was sanctioned by the US government for significant corruption. Dos Santos and members of her family are banned from entering the United States under the new restrictions. The Angolan government announced that it's preparing a legal battle to confiscate Isabel Dos Santos's assets in Portugal. She's still being investigated in Portugal and she has since assumed her official residence to the United Arab Emirates. That's all I had for you today. Thank you for watching. Until the end of this video, see you in the next one. Peace.